I, I couldn't move away from the fact that it's an incurable disease, which means that I'm, I'm not going to get better. Parkinson's disease is a chronic disease. It's progressive and really affects the brain. The things that patients experience are movement-related disorders, meaning that they have tremors, slowness of movement, and their arms or legs become more stiff. The reason why we have these symptoms is that there is a degeneration within certain specific cells in the brain that produces uh, dopamine. And because of the lack of dopamine, we have these symptoms. Parkinson's disease is, as you said, more common in the older group of people, in younger patients, because the diagnosis is less often suspected. So therefore, there is also a longer delay to diagnose younger patients with Parkinson. And number two, what I wanted to highlight as well is that surgical treatment is available and that people may not actually be aware of. And I think that's also quite important to raise awareness of that. I didn't think that I had Parkinson's. I, I actually mm. went to see the doctor because I was having panic attacks and I didn't know what to do about them. I went to see the doctor. He was very careful. He told me that it could be due to two things, psychological or neurological. Um, a lot of the symptoms that are very characteristic of Parkinson's disease are movement related. Slowness of movement, they have more stiffness, they feel sometimes that their arms or legs are dragging. Tremor is also quite common. These are the classic symptoms. I think the other thing that is not as frequently mentioned are the non-motor symptoms. And actually they present very often before the movement signs. These are loss of sense of smell, constipation, sleep disturbance, some urinary symptoms, as well as uh, anxiety and depression. So these are some of the very early signs of Parkinson. I think my mind sort of went blank because I wasn't expecting it. I, I couldn't move away from the fact that it's an incurable disease, which means that I'm, I'm not going to get better and that the best of science and technology sort of can't help me. I have to plan my whole life around my medication right now. The other thing is in general, movement becomes more difficult. When I'm off, I am slower. I may be unable to move because my muscles are too stiff. And you have to deal with the fact that people are going to look at you. To be nice, I would say they, they look at you with a confused look. Or basically, they will give you weird looks. Uh. So I'm a geek. <laughs> and I actually transformed my bedroom. Almost all of my electronic appliances in my room, like the air conditioning and the speaker, the TV, yeah, everything is voice activated. These are things that help you to be more independent. And I think that's a good tip, correct? Because some people don't have, have not thought about getting voice activated system and you know, they'd rather not pick up the phone, which is what I've had some, some of my patients say, oh, we never pick up the phone anymore. I don't go and answer the doorbell because I don't want to be, uh, to be stuck. First line treatment really is the medication as well as lifestyle modica modification. So for example, you know, change in diet, uh, regular exercise. So patients have to have a routine uh, around their lifestyle. The medication started off smoothly so that there wouldn't be the motor fluctuation. But as I continue to take the medication and as it progresses, I find that it starts to wear off maybe half an hour before the next dose. And then it takes about 20 to 30 minutes for it to kick in where I take it. So if effectively, I lose about one hour in between doses. So that can be quite difficult when you, you have social activities or when you are working. For the first four to five years, it's really a honeymoon period where the response to medication is really ideal. After that, they start to develop some resistance to the medication. Uh, medication does tend to increase, the regime becomes more complicated. They have to add more than one medication into the treatment and patients start experiencing uh, fluctuations uh, with on and off symptoms. Medication themselves can, can cause uh, side effects. So too much medication um, can cause patients to have dyskinesia, uncontrolled movement, and later on, you know, we have more and more advanced symptoms. It's a well-established treatment for Parkinson's disease. Well, it's actually, it's a pacemaker for the brain. And the system really is quite straightforward. It comprises of three components. The electrode that goes into the brain, 
the battery itself, the neurostimulator, and a programmer, which is like a remote control that the patient can use to control uh, the stimulation strength. There's a battery here that's connected with wires to the brain. It's inserted deep inside the brain structure. These are very thin wires, and it's connected to a uh, neurostimulator, which is essentially uh, a battery. And it generates these special pulses that essentially disrupt and normalizes uh, signals uh, within the brain. And I think the key point I want to make is that patients should start thinking about surgical treatment. So when they start having fluctuations and dyskinesia, instead of waiting till it's very late uh, on in the disease, which is what traditionally people consider DBS to be most effective, in fact, we should think about it when the disease is still starting to show some fluctuation, but not so much that it's really, really an advanced stage. If someone is younger, they are still usually at the peak of their productive life, as opposed to someone who's older. And there's a lot more they want to achieve in their life. And I find that some patients um, would want to do the DBS because they, they don't want to be tied down to the medication. Because very frequently, uh, you're taking a medication and you're kind of living by the clock. And some patients really want to avoid that because DBS is on all the time. So therefore, they are less tied by the clock, even if they miss a dose or you know, they, are, they are okay. It's important to have the right mindset. And the most important thing is that DBS should not be left uh, as a last resort. You know, I think there's this idea that it's really for, for very advanced Parkinson's disease because it's important to be able to preserve that function as opposed to let it uh, deteriorate. A very big important thing that you have to do is you need to be more accepting of help and, and you need to see it as not a disabling thing but it's love and concern from your friends and family. From a medical perspective, it's obviously being open to all the different options as well. You know, I've had some patients who were not open for deep brain stimulation surgery for, for many, many years until it became quite bad. Then they went for surgery because they felt they had no other option. And after surgery, they told me, you know, oh, I, I wish I had this five years earlier. Thank you.